Greetings, Kerbinauts! This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number 27 of Project Odyssey. And today it is going to be a very, very short episode because I really don't have that much to show. And the reason is this. Yes, indeed, I have begun the upgrade to the 025 version of KSP. I have needed to re-download every single mod because pretty much all of them had updates that were required in order to work properly with 025. And in the process of doing that, many things broke. So I've pretty much spent the entire week just getting myself upgraded and making sure that everything still launched if it previously could. I've taken this opportunity to set up a GitHub, which you can see right here. I already had the mod that I'm maintaining in there, so I decided to put Project Odyssey in there as well. That way I can keep a history of everything I'm doing and make it maybe much easier for other people to download and install the same configuration files. So instead of really having much of a show or episode this time, what I'm going to do is give you the big differences between this, uh, well, the last time and this, when what we had in 024 and now what we have in 025. As far as 25 features, the only ones I've actually been able to make use of so far are the Z for maximum throttle, the vessel mar markers that are around the KSC, and the new part explosions, which you're going to see here in a moment, actually. I'll probably, of course, make use of destructible KSC facilities, and I might make use of some of the new space plane parts. We'll see how it goes as the season continues. As you can see, not every relaunch to make sure my old craft file still worked was going perfectly. Also, as you may remember, I lost all of my movie sets, but the wonderful fan named Sean, aka LarkV on the forums, offered to rebuild my sets simply by using the movies that I've done so far as reference material. Well, I took him up on that offer, and this is what he has provided me so far, and as you can see, these are pretty darn cool looking. In the actual game itself, what I've been working on a lot are the engine effects to make sure that everything looks really super cool whenever I'm launching anything, since I do quite a bit of that. You can see here that I've worked on the engine exhaust coming out of my frigate stage that helps boost the Tedris satellites up into orbit. I've also done a bit of work on my core booster engines and my solid rocket boosters to get them looking perfect. On the core booster engine, I'm even simulating the fact that we have the gases escaping from the engine to help cool it, just like on some real-life rocket engines that do the exact same thing. As we get higher altitude, that will slip down below the engine a bit as we get going faster and faster, and then it won't be quite as pronounced. I have also fixed up the decouplers. You can see right there that they separate quite nicely now, no longer destroying engines. The first stage decouples and retros quite nicely as well. Then we move up into the upper stage for this module launcher. It has all kinds of new goodies on there, like retros that help separate the fairing, an improved lower engine there. I think that flame looks pretty damn good. Most of the parts on all of this haven't really changed much. I just had to fix them up to make them work with 2.5. We can also take a look at the camera view on the decoupling of that second stage from the payload, the core module as it separates away. I've been working on the rebalance of things to work with tweak scale, like the RCS jets on the core module here, that gyroscope that I keep up on the top, making all of that work with tweak scale, and then working on the engines for the orbital maneuvering system on the core module, getting those to be nice and pretty. Look at that, look at that blue flame coming out of there. That thing is just gorgeous. So that's what I've been up to. I've been trying to make things more like this and a little bit less like this. However, sometimes I need a break and something to play where I actually get to launch things instead of setting up files and configs. I will continue running Odyssey missions, but I might want to run a second thing just for a little variety too, you know, and not get burned out of Odyssey. I'm not sure I can make up my mind between two ideas though, so I want to see what you think. It could be an opportunity to video a sort of sub-series in KSP from time to time. So I want something that you'd prefer to watch as well. Leave your comments either in the video or over here in the forums. 
The two ideas are, one, I've been inspired by some Reddit posts over the last several weeks regarding the real history of KSP, and I was thinking it might be cool to sometimes do a real history sort of thing in video form, but also using real solar system with full-scale launchers and full-scale payloads. Idea number two is that I could run a nearly stock, mostly hard mode career. What I mean by nearly stock is I would only use stock art and models, but I'd be allowed to create new parts by making my own configs to craft parts out of whatever squad has provided me. So if they have the art or models or textures, whatever they have, I can use that. I just wouldn't install any mods that have parts. And it would have to be something that's also available in the tech tree at that point as well. These new parts, so to speak, would also be available to viewers each week. So if you wanted to do this hard mode sort of career, you could follow along and you wouldn't have to install any special mods in order to do it. So that's it. Idea one, real solar system, full scale history of the world of space launches, starting with the V2 rocket and working our way all the way up to today over many, many episodes, I'm sure. Or idea two, career mode, only stock, but with a little extra help here and there of creating special parts to make things look even better. What do you think? Leave your comments, let me know. Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.